Hello, everybody. Um, my name is, is Roberto Soro. I'm a professor here at the Edinburgh School. And uh, I'm here today in my guise as uh, one of the people helping put this, this innovation lab uh, together. And now, <coughs> launching this is our, one of our first major activities. Uh, our focus today is really on the student projects that we're hoping to get started with this. Um, and I want to just say uh, a couple things very briefly about uh, how this the lab got started, what its purposes are. Um, John Tapple, my partner in this effort, is going to speak to uh, in a little bit more detail about some of the, the goals. And then uh, Aaron Riley, our creative director, the person who's in charge of the, the design challenges, will talk in detail about that. Um, this lab has its origins in a series of discussions last fall about the need for uh, some kind of a transmission belt between uh, faculty, students, and staff here at Annenberg who are developing a lot of ideas that have applications in uh, the marketplace for um, ideas about <coughs> digital media in that marketplace. There's a sense uh, in a series of conversations both with students and looking at, at student projects uh, that, that potentially would have a lot of interest uh, in the world outside, and um, in some conversations with Irving Ladowski Berger, who was our innovator in residence last fall, uh, about the need for kind of a more of a knowledge exchange uh, with the people who uh, made use of uh, some of the ideas and concepts that, that Annenberg generates. And so um, this lab will do uh, a number of different things. Uh, it's going to uh, uh, foster research and support research by uh, a number of faculty members working with students as well. We have faculty here today from, uh, from Annenberg, the Terry, and the Cinema School. Um, very much one of our objectives is to try and be as interdisciplinary as possible in, in our objectives. Um, we're going to do uh, some work with the, the corporations that, that provide the sponsorship for the lab in terms of bringing in executives for meetings here with students and the faculty to have them uh, hear what's preoccupying them, what trends they see, and um, to, to have uh, folks here to talk about their ideas and uh, in an exchange of information. Uh, our real, uh, one of our, our very important hopes uh, and one of our major emphases, however, is on work done by students and and recent graduates uh, were, were opening these challenges to people who uh, received their degrees in the last five years, as well as current students, both undergraduates and graduates in Annenberg, and very much we hope students in other schools. In fact, as you'll hear from Aaron, one of our objectives is for students to form teams that cross several schools. Uh, the um, the idea here is to provide a venue for um, students to develop ideas about applications, about business models, about usages of digital media, uh, about uh, ways that it impacts society, uh, both in the commercial sector, and the nonprofit sector, and the government sector, uh, be able to work together um, in teams to develop ideas. Um, we've created a tool where uh, teams can work together behind a firewall. If they want to keep an idea uh, private, we'll talk about the intellectual property a little bit later. And the intent is for it to very much remain with the students and be uh, <coughs> and be protected. Um, and when appropriate, to bring that uh, those projects forward to the public uh, and to the audience we hope to build. Uh, among uh, both in the, the firms that are dealing with the digital media, um, with nonprofits that deal with, use digital media tools for various kinds of um, social marketing and community organizing, um, and a broader audience as well. Um, so it's we'll, we'll, you'll get a lot more details about how we hope this will all work, uh, about the prizes we hope will work, uh, and the technical assistance that we'll make available um, to students um, from my colleagues here, starting with, with John Tablin. Um, and then when you get done, I'll introduce Aaron. Okay. So I'm going to make this really quick because we have a lot to cover today. So basically, we, we really want to concentrate on research and design challenges. And what we want you to try and do is 
share with colleagues at other schools. You know, we're, we're really building, you know, work with the cinema school and with Viterbi, as you'll see, and we want you to know that even if you have an idea and don't feel you have the competency to build it, there are people on this campus that can help you do that. So we want to concentrate on the tools, whether that's new ways to think about TV, interactive television, new ways of delivering journalism on iPads, new ways of thinking about geolocation, which is something we'll talk about later, and the protocols, that is, what are the social and cultural practices that grow up around these tools. Uh, it's driven by a few things. An extraordinary explosion in wireless delivery. This is where we are today, and this is the wireless data in four years. So we're just beginning this revolution. Don't think we're in the middle of it. The second thing, as you all know, the extraordinary explosion of social networks. This is the amount of time people spend on social networks. This is the amount of time they spend on email worldwide. You know, way bigger. Uh, the explosion of cloud computing. Many of the companies that are sponsoring us are very involved in this notion that everything will sit in the cloud and you will have access to it on a very light device like this. And you're not going to have to carry it all around. And the device use evolution as we move from the keyboard and the mouse to these more things and some of the work that we're going to do with Henry Jenkins and Aaron on K through 12 education work, we already know. They get it. The kids understand how to navigate on a touch screen. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a big project we're doing that was initially funded by the NSF uh, through Viterbi and IMSC, and now is evolving into something much greater. And it's the first really powerful geolocation portal, and, and Sion is going to kind of give us a sense of that. Um, some of, as Roberto said, some of the design challenges are put to us by companies that are working with us, that are sponsored. The, the sponsors so far are Verizon, IBM, Mattel, Levi Strauss, and Intel will be in next week, and there are a few more media companies going to come in in the next two weeks. Um, IBM, for instance, has come to us with a semantic search engine for investigative journalists that we think has incredible possibilities where the investigative journalism work, and we're going to be the beta test site for it for the whole United States. Uh, Mattel came to us with a little project that they own called Viewmaster. You all remember Viewmasters when you were a kid, right? Well, guess what? They have three million 3D images, and they don't know what to do with it. So maybe you put on your 3D goggles and, you know, one of the ideas you students may come up with is a very cool way to use those 3D images in a new way. So we're also interested in the evolution of the ebook. What will the ebook look like when it is full of multimedia, full of video, notations, audio files, all that? And this is something that Henry and I are really deeply involved with already. So, Roberto, you want to? Yeah, uh, introduce our, Aaron. And let me introduce. Uh, I'm just pausing to introduce Aaron because she's fairly new to to Annenberg. And, I mean, three weeks, four weeks, a month maybe. A month maybe. Um, fresh from MIT, where she worked um, with Henry Jenkins, um, and is now very much here and very much part of our family. Is going to be creative director uh, of the Innovation Lab. Um, Aaron is is. Uh, very well known as a designer of uh, media education tools and content um, of a, a groundbreaking social networking site, Zoe's Room, um, and a lot of the work with the new <coughs> literacies project at MIT that she worked on with, uh, with Henry Jenkins, both designing the educational tools uh, and a lot of the resources that you see in that, that, uh, that very powerful project. And she, we are very happy that um, she has brought this combination of design talent and academic approach to um, the digital media um, and real experience in producing products um, to this project. And, and she will be the person who will be working with students directly uh, or most directly in helping them develop uh, 
um, their project. So, Aaron? Great, thanks. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> so, um, I want to introduce to you, you're probably sitting there wondering how, how you can get involved, right? And so, the first design challenge that we want to introduce is called Crunch. Okay, so we're going to crunch on this for a little bit. It's a design competition for um, USC students from all schools to form interdisciplinary teams to collaborate and bring innovative technology, which is the tools that some that John was introducing, some of the tools that you could play with, or you could create your own tool, or also the protocols, you know, some actual concepts of like what kind of what are the new affordances of a tool that already exists that we could actually play with. And the goal is, is that you have the power of innovation in your hands. And, and the goal is to actually think about how we can create or redefine or create new models in regards to environment, our daily life, our entertainment, our social, socio-cultural issues. Really think outside of the box. So what's in store? $25,000 in prizes is at stake. Um, and it will be distributed among all the different finalists that are participating. Um, and this is what you need to do. It's, we're very open-ended. We're hoping that, um, just like we're looking for out-of-the-box thinkers, we really want you to come up with your own idea. But there are three requirements to continue to move forward in the competition in order to be, in order to be um, eligible for the end prizes. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't continue on your own and keep the project at your pace. Um, but if you want to participate in the Crunch Design Challenge, you need a Crunch of CPA, okay? Which is concept, prototype, and alpha test. And um, there are three check-ins. Um, the first one is going to be in October. And um, it's very, very simple. You get your team together, and you first develop like a 500 word, minimum word concept. In check-in number two, you develop a po prototype. It can be an online prototype or it can be a paper prototype. You decide. You might want to think about some of the different, um, different um, parts of prototyping that you would want to include. And at some of the open studio times, we can go over that, like uh, technical documentation, architecture, wireframes, things like that. Um, the third check-in is going to be in March. And that's for you to submit your alpha test. Um, and those that, the alpha test is not just about actually sharing kind of your, this is my prototype, but it's actually have you gotten out there into the community, whether it's the, the community at large here at USC, or public, or even through some of our partners, like, like uh, Roberto was talking about, about the K-12. We have six schools that you can test it with students in um, the schools, K-12 schools here in the area. So that's alpha test. Now there's, this, this criteria here is things that, um, that we will start looking at. It's not that you won't get to be able to move along in crunching a CPA, but you'll, this is criteria that will kind of benefit you in the end towards judging. And the first one is form interdisciplinary teams. We're really looking that you look beyond the school that you're participating in and find two or three other schools for you to start bringing it in. You know, innovation is really fostering collective intelligence, where we're pulling our knowledge together towards a common goal. <coughs> Another one is to request technical assistance if you need it. We, um, we have a certain amount of funds that you can meet with us after you submit your prototype, and we can sit down and talk with you and see if, if your project needs some technical assistance and we'll be able to connect you with some programmers. Um, if you're interdisciplinary, going just back up to the top part of forming interdisciplinary teams, hopefully, you know, looking across schools, you might be able to bring a programmer into your own team. So just think about that. The third one is consider the four C's of participatory design. Um, this is a model that I've used. I actually designed, this is my four C's. Um, and we use this to design some technology for new media literacies based on Henry Jenkins' white paper. And these are questions I always ask when I start to design. One is, have we facilitated connections in the design model? Or have we provided mechanisms for creating? Are there ways for communities to collaborate and build upon their knowledge? And have we, have we created transparency for media to circulate? So what I find is when I go back as I'm designing and I think about these four Cs, I often then know that I'm actually incorporating participatory culture into my design model. 
Um, participate in Crunch Open Studio. Your team's stuck. Your team needs a place to actually work. If you want some peers to bounce off your ideas, then come to Open Studio. We're having it on Mondays and Wednesdays down in our space, which is on the West Wing, ASC 103. So we're going to do that Monday mornings from 10 to noon and Wednesdays from 5 to 7. So hopefully that gives you some different timing as well as days where you can come and play with us. Um, attend Crunch on This dinners. No matter what part of the process that you are involved in, um, everyone likes to eat, so come crunch on this. And crunch <coughs> on this would also not only be about uh, sharing a meal, but being able to share your part, your process, where you are in your process, whether it's sharing your concept, showing off your prototype, talking a little bit about your documentation of alpha testing, and at the same time, being having a chance to connect with industry leaders that will bring, that will bring in to, the, to these dinners. Um, community matters. Uh, you and your team are responsible for getting the word out about your project. And on the Collaborate page of the Annenberg Innovation Lab, we'll have kind of like a fan site, a place where, you're, where you can like gather your fans, where you can tweet out your projects, not only to USC, but out there into the world. You know, how many people liked my project? That will actually be there on the Collaborate section. So we really want to see these innovation not happening just in a box, but actually really out there in the world. And it will also be a chance for you know, the, the industry leaders that we're talking with to start thinking about it too. So um, no matter what, keep on crunching. Um, I'm really into crunch. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it's too good, good a thing to be true, but I love it. That um, makes you the captain of this project. I am totally, <laughs> totally Captain Crunch. <laughs> Um, and part of innovation is experimenting. We often talk a lot at, uh, about failing and failing often. So do not be afraid to fail. Keep on crunching. And if you have problems, no matter what area that you are, what, what type of your process you are involved in, the best thing to do is to come and talk with us. Happy Crunch is always available. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, just let us know where you're at, and we'll just keep on Okay, so in regards to schedule or process, the Crunch Design Challenge starts now, right now. So start thinking about that concept. Start thinking about the different people that you can get together. Crunch Open Studio, Mondays and Wednesdays. Crunch on this dinners, October, January, and March. Um, you have to just sign up to be part of Annenberg's Innovation Lab, and everyone that signs up to be a member will actually uh, know about these dinners, when they are, and what's happening, and how to keep on, um, how to come to them. It's kind of like we, if we become members of the lab, we're part of this like exclusive club. <laughs> um, and then um, in April, the Annenberg Innovation Lab will have an annual conference. And um, this actually gets to prizes because the finalists will actually be able to showcase their work at the, at the April conference, in, which is um, in front of all the sponsors and all the companies. So let's talk about prizes. <coughs> um, there's always an end of the rainbow for everyone that participates. So if you moved on through the three check ins, and that's minimum requirements, everyone will have a par portion of the pot of gold, which is $5,000. Okay, it'll be split up between all the teams that get through to concept three, to check-in three. Um, those that actually uh, make it to check-in three will have an opportunity to premiere their innovation at the March 2011 Crunch on This Dinner. And um, there, everyone that is involved, not, we're not talking judges yet, we're talking about the community that comes to that dinner, will have a chance to vote on the top 10 finalists. Okay, those top 10 finalists will be the ones that get to actually uh, take another month to critique their, uh, to crit anyone that had a critique on it, you know, maybe your fans are giving you a little bit more advice on it, take another month to kind of keep on tweaking and then show your innovation at the April 2011 conference. There, there'll be an expert panel of judges that will, um, that will be, like you know, so you think you can dance. <laughs> they will. Um, they will be able to actually give you critical feedback on your work and what's working and what's not working because we all learn from process. And um, 
From there, the judges will award a first place, a second place, and three honorable mentions. Um, and then, whether you become a finalist of April 2011 conference or not, the minute you start participating, so I see some computers, hopefully you're signing up right now. Um, the minute you start participating, you have a chance to become the number one community crunchy. So you can take over my role as Cotton Crunch for that day. And, um, and that person will be, you know, who's been um, consistently involved in this uh, design challenge, who's been consistently providing peer reviews and opinions to other people that are working on it, coming to open studio, you know, really getting involved. And that person will receive $500 just for themselves. Not to share amongst a team, but just for themselves. So, beyond that, <laughs> we always have to think about IP. And I say, ask this guy right here about IP. But it's all good things, so I'm gonna pass it on to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, we're, we, we throughout this, thank you. Um, we, we're very concerned about uh, ensuring that everybody knows who owns what in terms of ideas. Uh, and um, the, the easiest um, way, one way to start thinking about this is, um, the, the, uh, the university owns intellectual property that's created here under certain conditions. Um, one is if it's um, the result of employment to create that intellectual property. Um, the other is if it's a sponsored, in a sponsored project where the university is actually contracted with somebody to produce specific kinds of intellectual property. And so, and so the money that has funded it was already was designated by somebody um, with some kind of ownership. Um, and the third way um, is um, what's called substantial use of university resources. Um, the first two situations aren't going to apply to students on these projects. You're not going to be doing these things as a job. Um, and we'll be careful about entering into a situation where you're dealing with, with materials from a sponsored project where somebody else has got a claim on it that goes through the university. Um, in terms of substantial use, I've had a lot of conversations with um, the people at the Stevens Innovation Institute and elsewhere around the university about how to define this rule so as to give students a lot of help, uh, but keep that substantial use line out there somewhere fairly um, in, in, in a, in a, involving a fairly substantial investment by the university. And the, the rough guide that we've produced is that it's something like the equivalent of $10,000 of the technical assistance. I mean, that's a lot of time by a program uh, to work on a project. Um, and well before you would reach that point, um, a student would have a lot of conversations with Aaron and the rest of us. Uh, be sure you knew that whatever work you were doing was approaching the point where the university <coughs> might lay claim to the idea. Um, and the student would then have a choice as to whether to continue making, you know, go to the point of making substantial use of university resources uh, or go off on their own. Uh, the university working with it, it's a big place, as we all know, and it produces a lot of ideas. Um, and it produces a lot of intellectual property, much of which is marketed. Um, and so continuing with the university has advantages in terms of uh, patenting, copyright right protection, working uh, with the university on those kind of legal issues um, as well as potential licensing. But those kind of detailed questions are, will come up only when a project has, has marched a long way past the crunching stage. Um, and, and is really very well developed, but we're not talking about building actual prototypes of stuff um, that require uh, a good deal of investment of programming time or some other very tangible benefit that, that the lab would invest in an idea. Um, but let me underscore our intent, uh, the whole purpose of this um, is to stimulate student work and to, and to protect student ownership um, of, what, of what students produce. Um, because we, we want a lot of participation, big ideas, small ideas, long projects, shorter projects, um, and 
we'll, we'll be sure to, to keep an eye out on this for you and let you know um, if, if at any point this is going to become an issue. Um, and, yeah, I think I'll introduce Sion. Okay. Great. So, what we want you to see right now is just one potential project <laughs> framework that you could work on. Obviously, any of you who have used Facebook Places or Foursquare know that the world of geolocation is the hot thing in the world right now. So it just so happens that our president, Max Nikias, and some of the people at IMSC were way ahead of this game. They've been developing something in the geolocation space for quite a while. <coughs> And we think we've got a, a template, a place for you to play and, and kind of apply new ideas in a really good way. So, Sian, I want you to kind of give us uh, a, an introduction of what you guys have built. Okay, it's very nice to meet you. And my name is Sean Hawking, and I'm an associate director of IMSC, Integrated Media System Center, and then also the project manager of this iCampus.usc. And I guess you already know about this IMSC, uh, iCampus.usc. So this is a kind of uh, example of geosocial uh, networking system. And then, uh, well, this is the you know, uh, current demo version of the system. And then uh, you have to uh, know that uh, well, this has been developed in just two months by a couple of you know, students. So this is not quite in the demo yet. But uh, I just want to try to show some uh, basic concept here. So, well, in this uh, geosocial you know, networking application, and then uh, we just assume that pretty much every object can be geotagged. The location and real time is tagged. So, for example, we have video, and the video can be tagged with location and the time. Even individual person, the student, faculty, their location can be known exactly when and where. So. Well, so far we have lots of this kind of you know, web portals. So they just you know, handle what, the location and then real time and then the object, what? What is going on? What is going on, when and where? But uh, well, they are lacking one of the most important concepts, the human being. So who is doing what? Who is doing where and when? So pretty much this is a kind of your know, first try. We're going to combine those four important concepts. Who and where, and when, and what. And then the, this is the platform for that the web portal. Well, not really no, uh, complete demo system, but as you can see here, as a basic uh, interface, and we have Google Earth. So we know the geographical location correct, precisely. And then as you can see here, we can zoom in out, we can rotate it. Well, right now we are using some plane at Google uh, Earth. So maybe it looks like somewhat boring. But uh, in a month, and then we have great project. And then uh, the data producer holding a NAPTAP, and this company is producing the, all the map and sell it to pretty much everybody. Google, well, Mapcast, Yahoo, they are all using uh, those data. And they want to come to campus, and then they want to generate very realistic, top of the line, 3D model data. And then this boring you know, images going to be replaced with very realistic uh, 3D model of the campus. And we're going to use that as a kind of uh, geographical uh, interface. So and just to just be really clear, if you are on this application, you can, your Twitter feeds, your Facebook feeds, anything that you're putting out can be geotagged and placed on the map for your friends to see and the Bay to see <laughs> are on the map, they can see where you are. You don't, obviously, you can li log off of it. You don't have to be located, geolocated. But the, the point is that anything from campus sensors to on the trams going around the campus, anything can be t potentially geolocated. And some of us already, like Gabe Kahn, are thinking about what are the applications of this for public safety, what are the applications for news reporters in a, in a crisis, all those kind of things of where you can get this data. So the notion that we want you to think about is 
This is a giant map portal of 500 acres that you can use to think about what are the nature of micro-local news advertising, what are the nature of all sorts of things which you could apply and help the business models of not only the journalism business on these kind of things, but all sorts of ways to think. Needless to say, you've all probably heard some of the ideas that have come up. You go into a store, you check in with your Facebook places, and the store, the, the Gap store says, oh, welcome back, and hey, four of your friends have birthdays in the next two weeks, and here's uh, their sizes, and here's, the, here's a coupon for them. And maybe you're going to like that, maybe you're not. And one of the things we want to understand is how you feel about this new world of being on net a lot. So. Yeah, so exactly. The basic assumption is everything can be geotapped. So even the Twitter message can be geotapped. One news article can be geotapped. And the human beings can be geotapped. So when you assume that what the question is, there are millions of different ways you know, to type, combine all those geotapped objects. Then we can create pretty new applications, new ways of you know, communication. So, IMSC has a team of developers who can help you write applications for your ideas, bases, and I promise you many, many companies are just so fascinated by this space that from the point of view of your own careers and everything, it's a, it's a good place to be. And this is a great platform to think about as a tool that's available for y'all to use for the design challenge. So you can think of concepts on top to build upon this. Right. Okay. So this is the basic screen. And then from here, well, we have some series of applications here. Well, these are very simple applications now. But uh, let me show you know, how actually we can use this. So for example, well, we click this button, YouTube, and then well, all the YouTube videos, which is tied to this USC campus, just pops up. So when you click uh, one of these, and then you can actually watch the video. And that <laughs> is actually tied with the USC campus at that uh, specific location. And then uh, there are some other applications, something like this. Well, this is Trojan Alert, and whenever something happens, the USC DPS is disseminating some alerts, and then some specific alert is tied with this geographical location. So when you click this one, then you can read some messages. All right, uh, and then uh, this is about the location part, but uh, how about in the time? So if you look at here, this bar, and then we have time window. So right now, well, you are searching for any kind of information in this time window from March 19th to, well, some uh, futuristic. <laughs> because uh, some event is already scheduled. So we can search for some future you know, event. And then uh, when you change this window, and then as you can see here, well, we can display, we can search only the event within that time window and then on some specific location. And then as you can see here, we have another window here. So this is a tweet messages. And then we just get all tweet messages, which is related to what? USC. This is a real time tweet message. And then right now, we are using only one keyword for the filtering, the word USC. But while we are planning to well, elaborate this one, not just in the text keyword, but uh, based on location, geo coordinate in the longitude and latitude, we can convert that into some meaningful keywords. And then using those keywords, we can search some tweet data. And then uh, even further, well, still we don't see the who factor yet, right? So that's why this is not a... Okay. We gotta take, we've got 20 minutes for Q&A. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you wanna talk about okay. what, one other tool that, that's available? I mean, we're, what, we're still trying to figure out Pardon me? They're just examples, yeah. Yeah, I mean, these are examples. I mean, this is a very powerful example yeah. of, of one area of work that we hope people will be interested in. Uh, another tool that already exists, uh, 
here uh, that has a lot of applications is Vosmov. Um, mm -hmm. and, and one of the, the godfather of Vosmov, Franz Babar from the communications faculty is here. And so it's just tell, talk a little bit about how he sees that developing. And maybe I'll turn around so I don't turn sure. right back to the, to the audience here. Um, very simply, what we've done is to create a platform that makes it possible for people to create multimedia stories on a cell phone and send them to a website. Now, when I say that, you probably think, well, this is not really innovative. There's an app for that. I can do that with my iPhone. Uh, but what's really innovative, I think, about our, our process is that that works with any phone, with $20 cheap camera phones. Uh, we've designed this system so it works for the billion plus people who don't have iPhones that don't have data plans and won't be able to afford them for a little while. Uh, we've worked on this project jointly, uh, you were emphasizing the community, with a, a nonprofit organization that works with immigrants in Los Angeles, uh, who are the kind of people who have those phones. Uh, they happen to be about 10 blocks north of campus, so it's, uh, it's, it's really part of our community. Uh, they are very interested in, in telling stories about their real lives, which are stories that never make it to the mainstream press. Uh, when you hear about immigrants in the mainstream, usually the stories are negative, and, uh, and they don't really tell you much about uh, these people's lives. Uh, and so they've worked, we work together as a way to design the interface, to design the, the process through which we send the stories. Uh, at this point, we're at the alpha test stage. So we, we're past the concept, uh, with, uh, we've raised a little bit of money, we've built a prototype that's working, we've got several hundred users who are using this system. Uh, what we're hoping to do with the lab is go beyond that. And uh, one of the ideas is to use a geolocation as well, but again, with devices that don't have GPS. So how do you do this? Uh, there are ways, for example, to filter the keywords that come with the text that comes with a, uh, with a message to recognize place names. There's a, an API that Yahoo is making available for that that's possible. Uh, you can figure out which tower of the cell phone network the phone is talking to. Uh, pictures will have what's called exit data that has some information about the data. So we can find all kinds of ways to filter that and get some sense of where that picture was taken. Uh, so, whereas this is the high-tech version, uh, what we're doing is the, the low-tech version from the phone side and trying to do something that's as universal as possible. Uh, it's all open source, it's based on the Drupal platform for the server. Uh, it's something we're hoping to deploy in various places. Uh, India is one of our next targets. Um, so, without spending much more time, I'm happy to answer questions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, 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 as I said, we're offering a couple of examples of kinds of tools, of, uh, kinds of projects that might develop. The, the, the basis of this all really is the ideas that are going to come from students. I mean, it really is meant to be very open uh, to, to your interests and, uh, and your suggestions. And so uh, we'll, I'm sure th I'm th there's some questions or comments or concerns from that we can address. Over to you. Chris, um, <clears throat> how do you feel about students projects that are already existing that came to um, try to be part of this program. That's, I think that's fine. That's great. Well, yeah. you might get a fire hose that way. It might be a good thing. So that's yeah. why I ask. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff over at Cinema that would fit here. Yeah. I know about it. Sure. And they're already over there rolling. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 We'd like I think that. that's great. It allows them to another space to play yeah. with and further explore it. Yeah. 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 And also a way, I mean, one of the things that we were thinking about doing in uh, the first open studio is is for us to create interdisciplinary teams. If, they're, if they don't know other students in other schools, to come together at the open studio and do some ways of introducing the school's students to each other. Great. Yeah. Yeah, that's really critical. If you don't know anybody at Viterbi, we're going to help them. Or Marshall, yeah. or Cinema. We're going to help putting you together this with other people. This is the right space to do those activities. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, in the back. Because the Crunch, crunch Challenge is so focused on interdisciplinary uh, collaboration, is there a way to create a Crunch icon on IMSC that would allow for people to sort of crunch in, if you will, or whatever it is, so we could see where other teams are, where other people are, Great. to send out a beacon saying, I need to be here. And Love it. we can bring them in. Yeah. Yeah. We'll work on it. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. I like <laughs> words. Uh, yeah, actually, we have one uh, applications, and then uh, you can find your friends actually using Facebook social networking. So if you just make a group and allow them, actually you can find 
make you a friend on the campus. Great. What's is, this accept, is this accessible now to view? So this is a uh, demo version, and then uh, well, we protect this using password. Mm -hmm. But in a couple of weeks or two, and then we're gonna have much better version, mm -hmm. and, and then you, uh, we can open. When you sign up to the AnnaburyLab.com, we'll let you know as soon as any of these new things come up. Yeah. Way so in the back. What's Levi's involvement, by the way? They're one of the sponsors. No, I'm just curious because they're like clothing company, so I wonder how they're involved by like, technology. Well, what they're interested in is what is the role of social networks in brand affiliation? Okay. It's very deep, important stuff for almost every company that's selling stuff to your generation. All right. You know, and so they want to understand that better. And. Hi. Sorry, and Balsamo, thank you for coming. First few, yeah. first few minutes, but um, so what are the mechanisms whereby faculty might, um, you know, just pitch some ideas and suggest things that students might work on? I think it would. I think it would be great uh, to come to open studio time, and and <coughs> if, we, if you just reach out to me, if faculty have certain ideas, that we can get you on a schedule and let all the students know that here's some projects, and there's going to be a concept pitch and discussion about them at, during those times. Yeah. Be great. And the and there's a, is, is the open studio. Time. Yeah. yeah. And you can create. I mean. Uh, um, there's a mechanism on the, the website under the collaboration yeah. section where you can you can create start a project. You start a project and you say you're looking for people to, to join in. And we're hoping that, that faculty will act as mentors um, to student teams and suggest ideas and, and then um, and so it's you there's there's Banner, free banner advertising for your yeah. idea. Yeah, even, even, even once you start a new project, um, anyone that's interested in it can ask to request to join that team once you start one. Um, does that also apply to students who are working within a certain department and have ideas with staff? So can, are you saying staff and students work on a team together? Mm -hmm. Like if we're working with a certain department on campus and we have some ideas, does that also apply or does it have to be specifically students and uh, faculty? No, I think staff can be involved too. Yeah. You know, we staff, can, faculty, and students. The, I think the key though is that these are student-led. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, I think that's the intent. I mean, we'll, we'll I, if, if you hadn't noticed, we're kind of making this up as we go along. Um, so, I mean, we haven't done this yet. So we haven't had a situation. I think we would have to sort of figure, you know, talk the, I mean, if it, if, it was a, if it was a project that already existed in a department that staff were involved in, we just would have to talk to the folks there and figure out how to, how to position it in all this. But we're, we're, our intent is to try and bring in as many different kinds of people in different situations and different configurations as, as sort of arise from the experiment here. Yep. And how about an alumni? Are they? Yes. 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 I, think we said after five I, I think we're yeah. We basically said you know people who've gotten their degrees within the last five years. Is there any uh, process for students to apply to join us? I mean, is there requirements? There's no requirement. There's Just no test. Sign up on the lab. You know, bring up yeah, the lab. Yeah, because that whole section is set up. Yeah. There's a sign up if you go to the um, to the website, which is AnnenbergLab.com. I wish you could do. Oh yeah, here these yeah, are handouts. Cool. So, handouts. Cool. handouts are good. Uh, there's a sign up option, and you can you sign in um, and. Um, and that's about it. Joining a team, you, 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 um, the team leader has to sort of. You sign up right there. Sign up here at the top of the site. Then, then once you're there, then in the collaborate section, you can start a new project right here. here. And you want to find out all the details of crunch, you just click there. Click and here. You create a team and then you you know you anyway, you understand. Thank you.
Yeah. There is a yeah. section on the collaborate site where you can say, hey, I have certain skills. I have, I know how to program in HTML5, or I, I'm a good marketing person. Or, That's when you, you know, sign you, up. It, you know, and when you sign up, there will be ways for you to put your picture up, your identity, what you do well, what you think your, your skills are, and that will help other people find me. That's true. We're talking to staff and a lot Absolutely. Of John? Um, actually, three uh, related points. One is uh, I've been working with John so that as projects develop, those that run into policy issues, I'd particularly like to hear about it because uh, there's a, we're going to lag the rest of it, but as these develop, so policy related questions that come up. Roberta's already talked about the intellectual property kinds of issues, but if you run into things that are blocking you, that are causing problems, we would particularly like to know about that. Yeah, we, we want you to be aware of this policy side to the lab, too. This is a project we're going to do that Jonathan, Gabe, Josh Kuhn, and I are doing in Washington, D.C. with T-Bone Burnett and Jack White are leading it from the musician's point of view, but we have all the major record companies, all the big ISPs, the Future Music Coalition, all the people who think about what is the future of a music business business model. So if you're interested in those kind of tasks, Jonathan's kind of going to lead that part of the policy part because needless to say, some of that will come into how do we get Washington to you know, lean on other people to protect intellectual property in some ways, you know. Second piece, and something that that I learned here, um, in terms of that, I happen to have a an assignment in my undergraduate class, which may well link with this because I'm going to have teams of people whose job it is to publicize uh, and get attention for projects, so that as people get involved, uh, I may be able to provide you, uh, you'll have to pitch them, but you, they're going to get to choose what they want to work on. But if you have something, I may be able to get you three to five people to work directly on the marketing, the tweeting, and all of that, so that if, uh, as you develop, let me know, it's not for a few weeks yet that I'm going to lay out that assignment. And the third thing, uh, is there's also an international dimensions. There is another group that is sort of a sister group to the Innovation Lab called the Annenberg Research Network on International Communication. And we are actually focused on the international issues of innovation and policy particularly. And we are actually going to be meeting a week from Thursday about 12.15 uh, at the Annenberg Research Park, which is up on Adams, so that any of you who have international interests, uh, and particularly any international policy interests or comparative interests, so if you're interested in China or Europe or Brazil or something like that, uh, you should try and mark down, and we'll probably even feed you lunch too, but it will be basically 12.15 to just before 2, one, probably 1.45, um, a week from Thursday. Okay, we're almost out of time. Any other questions, thoughts? Yeah. Um, what are the university policies since you brought it up? Was that the week in projects that you're doing in actual classes to take it out of the classes yeah. into the lab? Oh, I missed that. This is this is uh, university policies regarding taking projects out of class into the lab. Um, the first thing to mention is, is that the cinema school is a world apart of us. And anybody who, who works there on a project that makes, that makes use of cameras, recording equipment, other things, know that there are very specific rules that apply to anything you do um, as a project there. Um, otherwise, work you do in, a, in the process of coursework as a student at USC belongs to the student. We had a breakthrough with the games. We were able to retain ownership. The students were able to retain ownership of the games where they published and retained ownership. Right. Right. It's different than the film. It's different than the film. But films, it the film, student films produced in class, I believe, are one of the few exceptions 
on okay. this campus to the basic rule that if you're, what you do as a student for a course belongs to you in terms of the ability to publish it under your authorship, you know, you have the rights, the first rights of publication, all the rest. It even applies to a thesis, um, which the university does publish on ProQuest not only, but the, the student retains the publication rights to to the material in the thesis, even though it's it goes through its own publication process at the university. So uh, we're, we're we're very much about trying to protect those rights that already exist for students, which are quite substantial. I mean, you, 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 uh, you do are able to do work and own it here. Any Good. other questions? Well, thank you all for coming, and we hope to see you at the first uh, yeah, yeah. It'll start next Wednesday. It'll be the first one. Wednesday, 5 to 7. Sign up on the website. You'll know where to go.